Um, is Dr. Gopal Krishna Behara. He's an enterprise architect with 19 and plus years of extensive experience in the ICT industry, spanning multiple disciplines, pre-sales, consulting, enterprise architecture, service-oriented architecture, business process management, solution architecture, project management, product development, and systems integration. A useful guy to have around. He is TOGAF certified and also certified in IBM Cloud Solutions. He serves as an advisory architect and mentor on enterprise architecture, application portfolio rationalization and architecture assurance initiatives and continues to work as a subject matter and author. He's worked on multiple architectural transformation engagements in the USA, the UK, Asia Pacific and the Middle East and all of which presented a phased roadmap to transformation that maximized the business value while um, minimizing costs and risks. Dr. Gopal is currently working as senior enterprise architect in Global Enterprise Architecture Group of Wipro. He's published white papers in international journals in SOA, BPM, and e-governance, and also done a significant contribution for the SOA reference architecture definition across the organization. He's also received the International EA Hall of Fame Award in 2015 from the FIAC Institute, um, linked with the Zachman Institute, and authored a book um, called The Enterprise, Archite Enterprise Architecture, A Practitioner View. And that book is published in the US um, by MK Press. So without further ado, a warm welcome please for Dr. Gopal Krishna Bahira. So, I'm working as a uh, lead architect uh, on e Pragati uh, initiative of uh, state government uh, of Andhra Pradesh uh, with uh, J. Sachinarayan sir. So under his guidance, uh, we are work I'm, I'm working on this. A group of uh, consulting team is working on it. I'm part of it, actually. Now, uh, just to uh, begin with uh, you know, the concept, you know, the topic today which I'm covering I'm audible, right? So the topic which I'm covering today is uh, one of the uh, system, uh, very critical system or, you know, which you can call it as a game changer uh, uh, for the government and, and you know, uh, helps in uh, having a better service delivery uh, to the citizen, um, uh, which we call it as certificate-less governance system, CLGS. Now, so, uh, I'm very glad that, you know, I just wanted to uh, give a small, uh, you know, the challenge or, you know, the, uh, the, the, the nature of work which we do uh, under the guidance of uh, Sachinan sir. I'll tell you one example how this has evolved. So, the Digital India, uh, the central government has uh, uh, initiated uh, a, uh, a program called Digital Locker. Many of you are aware of it, uh, the Digital Locker, that the locker given to the citizen, and the citizen will be able to store uh, his, his documents. It could be any type of document, any nature of the document. He has a storage space available, and uh, the citizen will be able to store it, such that he don't need to carry any physical documents whenever he goes and applies for uh, uh, for you know any any of his uh, uh, services okay so uh, having said that you know uh, sir wanted you know uh, sachinand sir wanted us to uh, come out with a, a system similar to that um, which you know uh, he wanted uh, us to create such that the citizen should get benefited and he don't need to carry the physical document. So, and we had a di discussion. So, we work based out of uh, AP Secretariat, Secretariat uh, South H Block. And uh, most of our discussions are most of our, uh, uh, the, uh, whatever the ideas which will come out is from Sachinarayan uh, uh, Garu room. And every time when you go in, you come out with a new idea and that will be always uh, 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 beneficial. I mean, he always thinks that it's not to just to build the system, but it should be benefit to, beneficial to the citizen. How is that citizen get benefited 
out of this system which you built. That is an idea he will always come out with that. So, when we went to him, so I did a study of how this digital locker implementation has been done in Kerala state, what is that central government initiative, how is that it has been done in Maharashtra state, what are the limitations that are facing, what are the responses in social media uh, saying the citizen is facing the issues and uh, I created a, a, a beautiful presentation and you know uh, uh, try to tell him, explain him that sir these are the things which uh, the current digital locker system has and we need to enhance these, these, these areas. Then he said all that is trash, I am not looking for a locker, I do not want storage, I do not want, I don't want birwa. I will give you one example. One of the uh, uh, scenario which I came across uh, du during my uh, uh, the revenue department uh, as a uh, head. So, one uh, it seems uh, one lady has approached him asking for some uh, scheme benefit and uh, she has gone to multiple departments to submit the application form and also the credentials. Uh, what are all the enclosures, you call it as an enclosures. So, residential certificate, then 10th class pass certificate, then NATO certificate, caste certificate. So, she has to co uh, collect all of them and go and submit it to multiple departments. And that lady has come to uh, Sachran sir and mentioned that you know these are the number of trips I have made, these are the number of departments I have visited. So, so can you I mean, so uh, the amount of pain she has undertaken uh, to fulfill one of the service from the government, she has shared the, her experience and the sir came, um, at that time he came out with an idea like you know, why do not we have a system which needs or which moves from citizen centric to government centric, move the responsibility from citizen to the government. It is the responsibility of the government to fulfill the citizen request, whereas the citizen will only submit the application form and a unique ID through which he will be identified. And it is rest of the government department responsibilities to verify, verify the credentials of a citizen, whether he has passed or not, go and connect to SSC board and then look at his uh, 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 verify his uh, uh, pass certificate or you know credentials. Go and connect to the MAUD and then see uh, our revenue department and see where, uh, whether he is a valid resident or not. So, these are the ideas uh, which has come out, come out from his uh, brainchild and I can say now the certificate less governance system which you are now trying to build is a unique one and uh, it was not built. Uh, any state or you know I have not seen the, this type of uh, um, a system uh, which we are building now as a part of uh, uh, e-pragati program. Okay, so having said that, so I am more going to talk about you know since this is more of a system or it is more of a solution, so I am going to talk more uh, details about you know the, uh, uh, the system overview, then uh, what is the life cycle, what components it's, it has and how is that we are going to establish sort of thing. So, uh, more in the solution space, okay. So, please uh, bear with me on that, okay. So, having said that, so I am going to talk about you know what is the uh, context of CLGH. I think now you understood the context of CLGH. So, CLGH stands for Certificate Less Governance System. Then why CLGH? What is CLGH? And what is the CLGH system overview? And what is the CLGH, the logical view of it and uh, how you need to uh, take it forward. So, if you look at the context, you know, uh, I was just mentioning about, you know, the digital India program. So, you make the pre uh, prepare the India for a knowledge future is the initiative from the digital India, the central government initiative. What are the three key main objectives are? You create a digital infrastructure as a utility for every citizen, okay. So, in terms of you know providing the internet or you know uh, the connectivity, better connectivity, 
Okay, so all the digital infra infrastructure need to be provided to the citizen for, uh, for to better service uh, delivery. The second one is having a governance and services on demand. And the third point is, you know, digitize all the documents and the records of the citizens and make them available on a real time basis. Okay, this is the initiative uh, which the central government has, uh, has initiated as a part of digital India. And the third point, if you look at, this is nothing but your digital locker. Now, if you look at, so uh, having said that, you know, we, before we developing uh, the CLGS system, we had done the, the as is study, okay, as a part of, you know, enterprise architecture in, initiative, as Dr. Pallava uh, earlier mentioned that, you know, it is not a civil engineering where you need to build from the scratch. The system is already existing. The system is already operating. So all you need to do is you continue the operation and try to build an enterprise architecture such that the both will merge and then go forward. So that was an idea. So what we did is we did a current system as is study of the system and then we try to look at you know what are the various certificates uh, that you know uh, the citizen um, is availing or you know uh, the citizen has to submit to the uh, various uh, departments for the, uh, the service delivery. So some of the certificates I listed here you know birth certificate, caste certificate, marriage certificate, income certificate, nativity certificate, etc. So if you look at the present system, uh, the, the some of the key observations from our side are citizen has to submit copies of certificates multiple times to various departments and agencies. So it's a, it's a typical overhead, okay? The other one is uh, keeping all the certificates in physical form with the administrative authority. So ultimately, the department person has to keep them uh, or file them or, you know, put them in a rack. So this uh, lot of uh, overhead uh, for the administrative authority. And then verification of uh, you know, the authenticity of certificates, whatever those physical certificates are submitted by the citizen, so they need to be verified, the authenticity has to be verified. So which is uh, literally a time consuming uh, task. Okay, for example, uh, I apply for, uh, uh, like uh, again, Dr. Pallav was mentioning about the passport. So at least uh, two, three years back, you know, it used to take one month time to get a passport. Now today, uh, uh, you can get it in, you know, one or two or max by one week, uh, the passport will be in your hands, you know. So the SLA has come down or, you know, the, the, the time to uh, make the service delivery has drastically reduced. Now, if you look at uh, the Andhra state, uh, the the citizen facing uh, portal or most of our uh, the citizen services has been done or you know fulfilled by using MiSeva. MiSeva is a portal, okay. So 70 percent of MiSeva transactions are uh, uh, in the form of certificates, issuing the certificates and it's a used volume. So the, the citizen has to go to MiSeva center and then submit, uh, submit his application form and then uh, wait for uh, MiSeva Center to respond back and then he can, he, the MiSeva Center in turn go and, you know, check with uh, the respective departments about uh, the, its authenticity and the credentials of the citizen and the validity of the certificate and then does the issue. So today, the MiSeva is uh, almost, uh, uh, we took the statistics, you know, uh, 2015, uh, Jan to December 2015. Uh, it is uh, uh, performing a transactions of almost uh, three crores, three crore uh, uh, certificates are, you know, uh, it could be a certificates or, you know, uh, licenses or, you know, uh, permits or registration. So almost like uh, uh, three crore transactions have, uh, have been happening uh, in one year, uh, one year of uh, tenure. So this, this is the statistics we gathered. So. If you look at that, uh, and the remaining 30 percent, remaining 30 percent of transactions are happening through individual departments, individual departments, okay? So this is a huge volume, okay? Then most of the certificates are based on uh, data already present with the government. The government already has the data. So again, Dr. Pallav was mentioning earlier, you know, so the data is already with government, 
but citizen has to submit uh, the again and again uh, uh, the is uh, no, uh, credentials or you know his certificates uh, to meet uh, the service delivery done properly okay so uh, this is a huge redundancy here so this is the current system so then what we did is uh, uh, just i mean uh, uh, reiterating the same thing you know uh, the, in a pictorial form so today it is happening something like this so the citizen has to go to uh, multiple departments and there is no connectivity uh, between the departments and most of the departments are happening uh, are functioning in a silos and uh, very less connectivity or i can say uh, almost no connectivity between the departments so the citizen has to make uh, multiple visits to the individual departments uh, to get his service done now if you look at uh, so having said that you know uh, so why 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 you need a clga system so certificate less governance system so we need to establish so need for certificate uh, less governance system is you know establish a a, a connected government and uh, minimize the usage of uh, physical documents and then eliminate the usage of uh, fake documents so this is another major uh, uh, factor and uh, reduce the peak cycle time so typically if you look at uh, the sls of uh, me seva or any other departments it is typically ranging from uh, the service delivery is ranging from 15 minutes suppose i go to encumbrance certificate it is ver very well uh, established uh, service today uh, so if i go to me uh, me seva center and submit a request for an encumbrance certificate i'll get it in 15 minutes so it is streamlined very well actually okay so whereas uh, some other certificate you know uh, it almost takes uh, I, I apply for some license and uh, it, it takes almost like 90 days typically 90 days uh, today and uh, by introducing a CLG CLG system we can reduce the cycle time and we can see that it can be achieved in a near real time okay so that is the idea of uh, uh, having a CLGH in place now what is the vision vision of CLGS? So the vision of a CLGS system is to abolish the usage of physical documents for transactions and establish a certificateless society across the Andhra Pradesh implementing certificateless governance system for a better citizen service delivery. So this is the vision of CLGS system. And uh, the, uh, the future service delivery scenario, how it look like. So earlier, you know, all the departments are in silos and there is no connectivity. And uh, now there is a, a, a central uh, uh, in channel, which is an integration channel, which helps you to connect all the departments using a e-highway. So again, e-highway is another factor, which is, I mean, as a... a Fallow was mentioning earlier, uh, like an, a similar to an ESB sort of thing. So it is an ESB plus some additional uh, uh, components, infrastructure components, which forms an e-highway. And this is, the, this is the term coined by Sachinaran Garu again. So e-highway is another system. So if you look at the entire e-pragati uh, uh, group of applications, so, so 72 applications so, and then 14 whatever that uh, four waves uh, and 14 packages what uh, JSAT has shown you earlier, the core component, you know, uh, the success of uh, e-pragati lies in two systems. One is e-highway which acts like an integration channel of connecting all the departmental applications together and uh, 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 having a seamless integration or seamless uh, 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 the routing of uh, any particular work component across the departments and uh, uh, which can be achieved through any highway. The other one is uh, more of a citizen uh, uh, centric and you know citizen benefit, benefit, beneficiary system or citizen delivery system which is CLGS system. So these are the two major components. Which, form, uh, which forms the core uh, components of uh, the entire e-pragati application. Now, having said that, what is CLGH? So now I'm just getting into the, uh, the what is CLGH, basically. So the objective of CLGH is uh, to have you know, the system available 
any time, anywhere, and uh, I should be able to access from uh, uh, anywhere. And then enable the digital empowerment of uh, residents, uh, providing uh, CLGH on the cloud. So that's the thought process what we have, you know, we are planning to have. And then uh, online access of documents, so you should be able to view it. And authenticity of e-documents, e uh, secure access to government issued documents through web and uh, mobile application, of course. And uh, reduce the administrative overhead, this is another uh, uh, important objective of CLGS system. And of course, uh, ensure the privacy and uh, authorized access of residents' data. So these are the major objectives of uh, CLGS system. If you look at uh, the, the citizen perspective or, you know, uh, in terms of, you know, uh, the business perspective, what are those uh, service layers? So we have a user layer, we have a services layer, platform layer, and the information layer. So the citizen employees forms the user, user, lay, user la layer and uh, government CLGS services, and there could be a private uh, CLGS services also. Like, you know, for example, citizen wanted to have... Uh, uh, in addition to certificate-less uh, system, in also wanted to have some uh, uh, storage capabilities uh, of uh, you know, his own uh, uh, repository, individual repository, where he wanted to store the medical uh, uh, history of a citizen has to be showed such that uh, he don't need to carry entire file. My father, whenever goes to hospital, um, to the doctor regular visit, he carries one big file as if he is carrying uh, land or, you know, property documents with him. So he don't need to carry all, all of those things, you know. He can just uh, uh, give access to the respect to doctor to access his uh, uh, reports and uh, he can actually look at it. And so that is where I, we introduce the private class services. And then we have a platform layer where, you know, uh, multiple systems, uh, processes, management and, you know, web. So when I, when I, when the purpose of having this, you know, uh, the processes here is uh, the multiple departments are getting involved to fulfill uh, one of the uh, one particular uh, citizen service where the revenue department should get in, uh, uh, get involved and then you should go to a, uh, the uh, police department for do a verification and then it goes to the MUD department uh, uh, for further uh, 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 inspection purpose. So all, all these uh, departmental authorities need to participate as a part of a workflow um, to perform those activities. So that is where, you know, in the platform layer, I have shown the processes and then the, the multiple systems are involved. So systems have been showed and the management is basically the, the authorities which are getting involved and then it should be a web enabled is what we, we are trying to show. And finally, the information layer, I think uh, uh, Gopi has already spoke about data analytics and data governance, usage of data, data types, classifications and all. So we need, we need to have a uh, open data, closed data, okay? Uh, in addition to that, you know, uh, the ultimately these are like, you know, uh, the e-documents. Uh, you store them as an e-documents, you can also store them as uh, 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 also as uh, your uh, uh, physical documents, you know, uh, in, in terms of, you know, bonds or shares or, you know, medical reports, other stuff. So that's why uh, we are trying to introduce a content uh, here. Now moving on to the strategy principles, so I'm not going to go uh, deep into it. In, uh, uh, so basically the principles of CLGS uh, uh, should be information centric. Uh, the other one is integrated, it should be an integrated platform. It should be citizen centric and highly it should be secured and uh, know, uh, the privacy uh, uh, the citizen should have uh, about his uh, uh, e, e documents. How is that, you know, uh, as a part of this engagement, you know, as a part of uh, uh, the as is study, we also did uh, these, the analysis of the certificates, you know, which I was men uh, mentioning earlier, you know. Uh, today we have 70 percent of uh, uh, MISEVA transactions are um, are uh, fulfilled by using uh, in the form of cert I mean as in the form of certificates. So what we did is uh, we did a service uh, portfolio analysis. So as a part of uh, entire government uh, government of AP, how many uh, services citizen services have been existing today and. Uh, what are those services and uh, uh, the nature of services, 
which department is providing uh, what service and where are those services has been redundant. How many MAUD is giving uh, the, the encumbrance certificate, revenue department is also giving just an example. So, so where is that redundancy? Uh, who are all the departments which are giving birth certificate? So, MAUD gives birth certificate, some other department also gives the birth certificate. So, where are those redundancies uh, and uh, what are those uh, uh, critical, which are critical, citizen critical services, which are moderately uh, critical services and which are low transaction volume or you know less uh, critical services. We have done the analysis of these services and come out with you know how many of them will actually qualify as the certificates uh, which will form or which will be the part of certificate-less governance system. And then to start with, uh, uh, once you implement this, so let us go ahead with, you know, these are the certificates. Once uh, uh, these are the certificates which the citizen need not produce because CLGS system is already in place. So we have done the certifi certificate, uh, uh, sorry, uh, service portfolio analysis and identified the set of services or the set of uh, certificates which will be part of a, a CLGS system. So I am not going to explain you know, how we did that, you know, the analysis part of it. So just a uh, uh, overview. So the, we are done, on the left hand side you see the service uh, filtra filtration, okay, what is the approach we have done it. Then we have done the ABC analysis, then we also identified them as G2B, G2C and then uh, 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 services and classified them, the, uh, all those uh, you know, filtrations have been done. And finally, we came out with a list of, you know, almost like uh, 758 services um, which, will be, uh, which will be delivered uh, uh, to the citizens and based on which we identified the, uh, the certificates which are uh, uh, almost like, you know, tentatively 103 certificates. For, a, which, for example, agriculture and cooperation, we have three, energy, we have one, uh, environment and you know, forest science, technology, we have four. So if you look at the, all this list, it has coming out to be 103. So these are the certificates which can be replaced by CLGS system and many of them are predominantly related to land, person and uh, life event, uh, uh, life event uh, related uh, 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 certificates which can be abolished. So this is the, the concept or this is, a, this is the outcome of uh, our as is study, okay. So now go, moving on, if you uh, try to look at the system overview, so this is, this is actually, uh, I mean having said that, I am just now getting into the, the solution space. So we have a uh, system uh, view of CLGS system. So uh, the it has four, four uh, uh, activities or you know the four steps. One is uh, create a digitally signed uh, database. Second one is create online digital certificate services, anytime, anywhere access of the certificates. And fourth one is the eliminate physical certificates. So these are the four uh, uh, um, activities which you perform as a part of uh, the system which you develop. And who are the key stakeholders of this? You know, we are uh, talking about CLGS, CLGS, CLGS. So who are the stakeholders of this? So we have an issuer who issues the certificate. It could be a government departments or, you know, private agencies or, you know, predominantly in our case, we'll take it as a government departments, okay? Or any, any uh, centers like, you know, Miseva or, you know, other uh, ePragati portal which we are trying to build can be used. I mean, not, not very uh, clear about it. but so issuer is the one who issues the e-documents to a citizen in a standard format and making them electronically available. So some of the examples are SSE certificate and registrar office gives those certificates, income tax department, etc., etc. The requester is the another one. So requester is the one who actually requests uh, for the certificate. For example, university and Dr. Pallav was mentioning about passport office. So, okay. so they request for uh, the certificate. So, uh, he is the entity requesting for secure access of a particular e-document uh, shared in the repository. And then, of course, the citizen who, who uses the CLGS services. So these are the key stakeholders. And uh, 
the expectations are you know uh, maintain the responsibilities are maintain certificates at personal level, produce certificates to avail various services and storage of the documents at the citizen perspective and the government perspective issue the certificates and verification of the certificates. So, that is the responsibility of the uh, government. Okay. Now, having said that if you look at uh, this particular picture, so this gives the integrated view of uh, CLGS system. So, the CLGS uh, being at the middle, so we have uh, the some of the components are you know the some of the uh, basic uh, uh, functionality. So, there is a request at the center and then the issue uh, digital certificate, verification, workflow, repository and uh, some of the services are you know uh, issuing the digital certificate requesting for the certificates, central view of certificates that is a repository, then store and retrieve the, the certificates, share and search and then workflow management. So, these are the uh, core components of a CLGS system and uh, if you look at uh, all other on the blue, they are all secondary departments which actually leverages or which makes use of uh, CLGS system. So, revenue department for issuing uh, uh, the registration certificate or you know late registration, housing department to identify the beneficiary and patadar and then MAUD for uh, assessment, uh, birth certificate, uh, correction on any certificate or death certificate, mines, then forest, labor, agriculture, education, health, industries, police and then uh, PR and uh, rural development, panchayat raj and rural development and then transport department. So, if you look at out of uh, no, 33, 34 departments, majority of the departments are actually consuming the certificateless governance system. Similar is the case with uh, the, the license management system. So, these are the, 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 this is an integrated view of the CLGS system or this is an importance, uh, importance of you know having a CLGS system in place. Okay? Now, moving on. We just came out with a life cycle of a CLGS system. So, if you look at the, uh, the first step is an issue. So, as a part of issue, you see a registration, okay? The and then what are the list of requests? I mean, we try to show uh, some of the um, high level services or you know high level components. So, list of requests and then access. And the second one is if you look at uh, the requester, which I am calling it as request the again it should be he should have a registration done and he will consume the 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 certificates issued by the issuer okay and then he will also have a view of the certificates and then if you look at the third step the digital certificate so the digital certificate is not just a certificate by itself it should be machine readable Okay. So, if you just put it under the scanner or you know reading machine, you sh it should be able to validate it actually saying that it is a valid authenticated uh, certificate. It should have a tag uh, on it okay. and then it should be printable and it should be shareable. So, that is the, uh, the, the, the third step you know, uh, the, as a part of life cycle digital certificate. Then the fourth one is uh, the repository. So, the, uh, the certificates has to be arranged or organized in a folder form and uh, there should be a document life cycle management implemented uh, the uh, in terms of you know uh, the access control provisions and then entire DMS life cycle has to be implemented as a part of you know uh, the uh, certificate repository or you know uh, CLGS repository and uh, you should also have the versioning, versioning of you know these uh, certificates or the documents whatever it is you are putting as a part of repository and uh, it should accept uh, the various formats okay a pdf format word format and then jpeg format you know whatever you know it should be very flexible enough uh, to accept the multiple formats of the document uh, to be uh, consumed by the requester and also uh, uh, stored in the repository by an issuer and then finally we also extended uh, the facility to the citizen uh, uh, saying that you know the a, a CLGH locker okay, where you should be able to download, uh, you should be able to upload, you should be able to share and uh, you also have a provision to uh, uh, create a digital signature 
on, on that uh, those uh, 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 documents which uh, which was created and the space is provided to the citizen as a part of you know now uh, the storage space is uh, it's like it's uh, like uh, very cheap you know so uh, it's not like a rear so you can definitely provide a, a space to the citizen uh, every citizen uh, uh, to store his uh, uh, documents if you look at uh, the key services of it you know uh, it should have a registration service digitally signed certificates uh, repository services real time access services uh, interface services report services these are predominantly the CLGH uh, services and uh, if you look at uh, the technologies uh, it should have a multi channel access it should also uh, uh, lever uh, leverage or you know uh, the the importance of e highway is already been discussed and then it should support multi language ultimately andhra so majority of the citizens are telugu speaking so it should support uh, multi language and it, it should also uh, have a, a connectivity or you know uh, talk to the third party systems we have a gateways in place and then try to create uh, some sort of uh, uh, gopi was talking about predictive and uh, diagnostic analytics which helps you to understand you know the citizen uh, how many citizens are getting benefited what schemes are uh, uh, are get, are um, uh, used by the citizens you know, which area the citizen has more um, more uh, response so all those things can be uh, arrived using uh, this uh, analytical engine and then if you look at uh, the services uh, online access of certificates improved control and record of certificates elimination of fake certificates improved uh, service delivery mission readable improved repository and multiple services fulfillment uh, with single request and then secure storage of certificates so these are the uh, the uh, predominantly the service levels are you know a better uh, uh, service portfolio of a clgs system then as a part of this program uh, we, we are in a stage where we actually creating the eprs documents so having completed uh, the the enterprise architecture definition who i mean uh, like you know uh, dr pallav was mentioning about you know enterprise architecture you do a, a blueprint and then put it in a shelf and then close it so it's not the way so the realization of uh, or the benefits uh, uh, of enterprise architecture definition happens only when it gets transformed into an implementation phase ultimately the the uh, the citizen has to get benefited by the fruits of uh, ea definition so there the goal has been achieved so we are in a stage where uh, we are creating the eprs documents which gets eprs is the e pragati requirement specification documents which gets converted into rfps and they get floated into uh, the public for their uh, sis uh, the system integrators to do an implementation stage so as a part of eprs program we are actually uh, doing a sample uh business process reengineering so as a part of business process reengineering if you look at uh, the uh, the some of the samples which i gave here are belonging to the primary sector agriculture and then license management system and uh, the health department and then land hub so and uh, where are the, the, the uh, what are those uh, certificates which can be part of your clj system we actually created the to be business processes which are a part of eprs actually i have not uh, shown it here so uh, farmer and dealers uh, id proof certificates so they we actually uh, created a to be process flow yeah to be process flow and then uh, uh, showed it here and then th these are some of the examples for example license management system uh, records pertaining to id address proof 10th class certificate degree certificate so if you look at this everywhere you need to give 10th class certificate pass certificate degree certificate 10th class pass certificate degree certificate so that can be eliminated actually so we don't need to produce all these uh, physical copies um, every time when you go uh, to particular department to apply for a, a, a service sort of so uh, moving on you know this is just a sample flow uh, which i wanted to show you know how that uh, clgs get uh, benefited so the citizen submits the request uh, for the certificates it gets authenticated and then forwarded the request to approving authority and then uh, the the request has been uh, received and then process the request and then you know based on the status 
the delivery uh, to the citizen happens. So this is a, a typical process flow. And then uh, we're just trying to show the key features. So finally, coming to the technology associated with it. So it, uh, it should have a, 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 a service-oriented architecture. Uh, loose coupling has been implemented. Um, the reusable component has to be built. And the storage space uh, as a part of a uh, you know, uh, citizen, we need to give 10 MB space per person. And then it should upload all these uh, you know, different types of files. Authentication should be there. And finally, e-signing and uh, document sharing facility should be in place. So these are the key features of uh, CLGH. And this is how the CLGH uh, uh, interacting with all the systems. So uh, just uh, again, uh, across ePragati, how the CLGH is getting used. Uh, like you know, uh, the group applications, and then departmental applications, and then uh, the channels, and then e-highway, how, how it get leveraged sort of. Then these are the technologies which I spoke about. Uh, this is a, a very high level view of uh, uh, the logical view of uh, CLGA system, how it look like. So uh, the various uh, layers and then all these things are getting connected using a e-highway and then trying to have a CLGS document, CLGS locker and a people hub uh, and then departmental applications and content repository. So. Then the integration, so finally, uh, the majority of uh, uh, the citizens' uh, credentials are verified either in a, a people repository, which we call it as people hub, or a land repository, which we call it as a land hub, and uh, a, or a business entities repository, which we call it as entity hub. So how is that uh, the integration architecture look like as been shown here? So throughput, uh, we have almost uh, 2 lakh transactions per day today and what is the volume uh, 2 crore requests per year and 20 percent uh, for year on year for next uh, three years this is what uh, we are trying to the system which you are building it's going to have these characteristics and then availability should be 24 by 7 and 99.5 uh, percent of uptime the system and the performance response time should be uh, two seconds and uh, the concurrent users you should support is 500 and uh, we need to have identity and access management uh, the security implementation for this and uh, the data repository, 10 MB space for citizen. Uh, to start with, uh, during the first year, we want to serve for one crore citizens. And then uh, standards, uh, it uh, again uh, leverages uh, SOVA platform and uh, technology independence. And integration is the most critical factor. It should happen through an EIV. So these are the characteristics of uh, CLGH uh, system. And uh, benefits, we already spoke. So what are we looking forward? So these are some of the uh, paper statements or you know, quotes from uh, uh, CM about uh, the implementation of CLGS system. That's it.